Hello guys, KJ4YZ, I Ham Radio Concepts. Check this out. We're checking out today the Chameleon Antennas P Loop 2.0, the Cha P Loop. You have the F Loop, you have the P Loop. We're checking out the P Loop today. A portable magnetic loop antenna, not so big, great for people that want stuff that's portable, that fits in a bag like this, that they could take with them on their adventure, set up in a matter of minutes. And even the people that are in HOAs that have a balcony, you got a nice balcony out there, and you want to set this thing up and have a glass of wine and operate some contacts on HF, right here. The P Loop 2.0. I love magnetic loop antennas, and I love antennas and things that fold up in a bag that I can take portable. Much like my QRP kit. This bag right here has everything I need. I've showed you a video about this before. It's got my radio in here, my battery, my solar panel, and like 12 antennas in this bag. I love having stuff that just kind of fits in a bag. This is it right here. So we're gonna talk about the magnetic loop antenna from Chameleon Antennas. We're going to show you how easy this is to set this up. This took me five minutes. I'll do it with you on camera. We'll set it up and we'll try to show you how to tune this thing, how easy it is to get this thing dialed in where you need it, and try to make a contact with it if you're in a condo, if you travel, if you're in a hotel room working, if you're out in the field and you want something portable, Chameleon Antennas, the P-Loop. Let's check it out. The place to come for amateur radio videos. So my son was in this room here and I said, hey, listen, I got a few things in my room. I need a little bit of extra room for a video to set something up. Beat it, get out, get lost. The name of the game, portability. Here's the canvas bag right here. We're going to set this thing up here and show you exactly how easy it is to set up. Now, the first thing I thought about when I got this antenna, I thought, well, that's great, but how am I gonna set this thing up in the field? I'm gonna have to tote this big old MFJ tripod with me? No, not really. It comes with, I didn't realize this till after, it comes with its own tripod. Here is the base of the tripod. This is a standard, regular old tripod, easy to set up, pretty simple. One, two, three, tighten the thumb screw. Okay, and then it's got one up here with a section that pulls out. That's one section. The thing about loops, this loop in general or specifically, is you don't have to have this thing up 20 feet, 40 feet in the air. Height is might, that's what we always talk about. How high can I get my antenna? Not the case with P-loops or magnetic loops in general. One loop size above the ground is totally perfect. Anything higher than that, and you're not gonna get no increased gain or angle of radiation. It's just gotta be one loop height above the ground. So, tripod. Next piece is the second part of the tripod. Now this is a dual purpose right here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna screw this onto the tripod like this. And this is kind of like what's holding my camera and what's holding my little light there. It's like a telescopic one, two, three, you know. Uh, there you go. You know, you can set the thing up and get it above the ground. But actually, another feature of this second piece is that it is, if you're brave enough, you can set this loop up with this rubber handle here and go pedestrian mobile. CQ, CQ, this is KJ4YZI with your FTA 17 around your neck. You could hold this loop and go walking down the beach with it and use this thing to make contacts on HF pedestrian mobile. Today, we're gonna set this up on a tripod. Now the next piece is this loop right here. This loop is the little loop of the magnetic loop. This goes on top and then really this is where you're going to feed the loop. This is your feed point. This loop is going to go on the top here. There's a little thumb screw. This loop has threads in it. One, two, three, you thread the thing in like this. Can you see that? Okay. Now, the next thing is the heart of the operation. This is your brain right here. This is the, 
capacitor, the tuning capacitor, so your matchbox. This is where the loop happens. Your loop is made out of coax. So you see there's a SO239 on one side, SO239 on the other. And with the coax loop, it's gonna go in one side and to the other, okay? And you're going to tune your loop right here with this knob on the bottom. Hear me out. You are not using a tuner on this loop. You are tuning your antenna right here. Using a tuner with this is going to do you nothing. It might actually hurt the performance of this. That's why there's a knob on here. You're going to tune your antenna to resonance maximum forward with minimum reflected power. This antenna right here will handle 10 watts full duty cycle, AM, FM, CW, RIDI, FTA, digital modes, and 25 watts single sideband for phone. They do make an accessory for this, it's called a power compensator, and the power compensator will add the ability of using 30 watt or 25 watts full duty cycle and 60 watts of sideband, so you can feed more into it. It's kind of like a, uh, uh, power compensator. It, it takes the extra power and makes sure that it radiates out the loop, okay? So we're going to put this little box here and we're going to tighten the mount. It's like a gun rail mount. Picatinny, Piccadilly, whatever they call it. Okay, that's half the loop right there. We're almost done. Can you believe that? With me talking in my loud mouth, we're almost done. So <clears throat> the thing about this is you want this loop right here, this round feed point loop here, to be in line with the direction of the loop on the tuning box. You don't want this thing all walkie jawed sideways, okay? So, we have that there. Now, the next part is your loop. This is essentially LMR 400 coax. It's very rigid. And they do say that they use the most optimal PL259s on the end with the highest grade crimp tool that they have to make sure that these ends are crimped as tight and as perfect as they can get them. That does make a difference in this loop. On this loop here, this coax, you have a Velcro strap. That is not only to hold this in this form. Let me show you. The coax or the uh, Velcro strap here is how you're going to fasten the loop onto this apparatus. Now, what I would recommend is taking this loop because it might be coiled like this naturally from being in the bag. And you kind of want to easily pull this thing out and get it in somewhat of a workable form. It is solid conductor in this coax, so you don't want to bend it at a 90 degree angle. This is what I do. I go like this. I kind of get this thing straight. Not straight, but opened up, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this and you're gonna put it directly over the feed loop here. Take this Velcro strap that I told you, go around the top and you're going to Velcro this loop onto the little loop here. Like that, okay? That's secured on there. Now you take one end on each side, it doesn't matter which end, and you're going to screw it in to the side of the match here, or the transformer or butterfly capacitor or whatever you want to call it. And then this has to be up a little bit more. Okay, one, two, three, we get this on like this. Then the last part, you want to make this into a circle. Now it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can see I'm a little bit oblong here. You want to straighten this thing out, make sure it's kind of in some sort of circular shape. Okay, and that's how the P loop looks right there. Now this is the regular 10 through 40 meter, 10 watt full duty cycle, 25 watt sideband P loop right here. And you'll notice that you want the loop to kind of be in line with this little loop up top. You don't want it all squiggly squaggly wherever. You kind of want the thing in a nice loop fashion, okay? There we go, that's what I need right there, a nice pop. There we go, perfect, okay? And the way these loops radiate is this way. Imagine you take a bicycle rim and you roll it down the street. 
kind of like this. If this was an actual wheel, you roll this down the street, that's the way it's gonna radiate. Off the sides of the loop though, you have a null, which is like 15 dB down from your receive. So if I face this like this, I would be facing north and south. Through the loop this way, broadside to it, I would have a null. So if I had some sort of strong noise or signal that way, I could null it out off the side of the loop. If I wanted to work somebody to the west, I would want to turn it this way. You get my picture? That's the way it moves. And actually I tested that theory today at State Parks on the Air. I had a, a Slovenia station uh, and he was like a S4 and I just couldn't get him. But then I turned this thing kind of like this. So it was sort of facing Europe and he was an S7. So it definitely made an increase in the received signal. Now what you're looking at is the standard loop, but I have something here that I have as an additional accessory that I'll show you. This is called the booster kit. Let me move this to the side and give you an idea of what this is. Now, you remember the loop we showed you? Look, we got a bigger one, okay? And if I back this up here, you can see this one is a lot bigger than the one that's on there, as well as the coax here. The coax looks like a lot more coax. This is called the booster kit by Chameleon. And basically what this does is it increases the diameter of your loop and increases the efficiency 15 through 40 meters. So on top of that, they do make another additional accessory called the power compensator. Um, and I didn't opt for the power compensator because I figured I'd rather have a more efficient antenna than to dump more power into a somewhat efficient antenna. I'd rather have something like this that gives me more antenna in the air. So I opted for the booster kit primarily for 40 meters, 30 and 40. I wanted a lot on 30 for digital and CW, 40 for phone. So that's what this is. I'm not going to set this up at the moment because it's going to make your loop diameter 48 inches, which is going to be kind of big in this video. So I figured I'll start small in the video so you can see it in the room here and uh, get an idea of what this thing looks like. But the last part of this is this coax here. So you're going to feed the loop right here, right? That's where you're gonna feed the loop. This piece of coax comes with a PL259 on each side, of course, but it's also got this hot dog looking thing on the end. It looks like a bunch of little Vienna sausages that are heat shrinked together. This is a bunch of ferret beads and essentially an isolator. What that's gonna do is you're gonna screw this into here and with the nature and properties of this magnetic loop, you don't want your coax to be radiating all the way back to the radio. So this is an isolator. This is going to keep your, your signal from, ice, uh, from radiating on this coax past this point. So your radio is going to connect to this end. If you're going to extend your coax, you extend it on this end not this end, because you want that isolator close to the feed point of this loop. That way all this magnetic or RF disturbance here coming from this uh, antenna, you don't want that jumping on your coax and heading out towards your radio and causing a problem with reflected power and whatever else. So that's why the isolator has to go here, okay? And you can use one of the other Velcro straps and tie that on like that, and that's it. So the loop is done. This is the Chameleon P loop antenna. And what I'm gonna do is now I'm going to hook it up to a radio and show you kind of how you tune this thing. There's a ballpark on how to get it where you want it and then you can fine tune it. It's only a matter of seconds to tune this antenna where you need it. Once you got it tuned, away you go. When you're done, you can take this thing right back down, put it right back in the bag and head out, you're done. Or leave it up on your balcony. It's not that big of an eyesore, right? HOA people. But you don't want something like this on your roof permanently, even though it is weatherproof. The box is weatherproof, the contact, or the, the connections and all that are weatherproof, but you gotta access this thing to tune it. One thing about magnetic loops is they're very high Q. They're very, very sharp on tuning. What that means is I could tune this thing to 14.035 for the 20 meter CW portion of the van. If I wanted to go to 14.275 for phone, I'm gonna to have to tweak this. It's really not that broadbanded because it takes the efficiency 
of this loop and narrows it down right into that slice of where you're tuning it. That's kind of what the loops do. But you can't take this thing tuned for 20 and switch it to 10 meters and expect to hear anything. It's gonna be way off. But you know why I like that? Because when I'm at a portable event like Pelican Island Special Event Station or Field Day, you got guys in the pavilion over there that are working with their antennas. And because this is so high Q, I could actually tune this thing for 10 and really not hear any of their harmonics or uh, close proximity you know, RF uh, from their stations on 20 because it's not gonna let all that, it's gonna reject all that. It's only gonna be efficient and resonant where I tune it. So I can really block off some of the other guys harmonics and spurious emissions from being 10 feet from them. Even though they're on 20 and I'm on 10, I'll still hear the CW coming in, but this kind of blocks all that out. It's pretty good. So let me hook up a radio to this and show you how I would tune this thing and show you how quick you can tune it from one band to the other. So the way you tune this first for a ballpark, okay, here's how this works. Uh, I usually go for the maximum receive first. So what you do is, you start at one end on this capacitor here, turn this up, you'll hear some white noise, but watch what happens when I get this tuned where it's resonant. Listen to the receive. Ready? Okay, you can hear the receive came up a lot. I'm in the ballpark, the antenna is somewhat resonant. Now listen. Special event says, let's try working. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. My SWR is flat. He got me. Ah, oh, you faded. Try to get him in a minute. This plane decides to go over every time I get outside with a video. It's ridiculous. We'll wait for him for a second, but look look at my SWR down here. That's what I have on the meter. So once you get it in a ballpark, then you send out a full duty cycle like a RIDI signal or air. Well, I got yelled at for doing FM, like a CW signal. But you just key up a, a solid full duty, and you can see my SWR is below 1.5 to 1. Okay? And watch what happens when I turn this. You'll see. See how it moved? So you want to get that as close to like that, all the way down. That's where the antenna is resonant right now. Yes, I know, you're going to yell at me for using ready signal, but whatever. So if I want to go to 40 meters, now watch, I'll have my receive up. And just tune this thing until the noise comes up. It's noisy on 40 around here. You can see my SWR though, flat. Okay. So having an analyzer would help, um, but you don't need it. You just need what's on the, uh, you know, you could just send out a solid CW tone instead of RIDI or FM, then uh, you could find, tweak that thing. It's very sensitive, very sensitive. Let's go back to 20 real quick, see if I can see, hear that guy. Now see, going from, listen, there's 40 meters quite a lot of S9 for noise. Now watch when I come off 40 meters. I don't hear anything. Nothing. Well, I'll tune it back in. Listen to his signal now, rotating this antenna, watch. He disappears when I rotate the antenna, that knowing effect I told you about. So with it this way, I was hearing it. Let's see if I can make the contact now. There he is.
Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Roger, Kilo, Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India, KJ4YZI, driveway portable, over. Oh, Roger, that driveway portable, well, you're 5-9 into Louisiana. Uh, what's the name and uh, location? Roger, you're 5-7 into uh, Vero Beach, Florida, right on the east coast, uh, testing out my chameleon loop here in the driveway at 20 watts on battery with a 706. Name is Eric, Echo Romeo, India, Charlie, over. Okay, so driveway portable, it is working. It's, um, if it's working here, it's gotta work on the river, right? And it's gotta work uh, on field day and contest. And whenever the bands are not open, the ARRL turns them on with a contest weekend. So next weekend or next contest weekend, we'll try it out. So uh, that is the Chameleon P-Loop antenna. You turn this down and get you a little better shot over here of it. There you go, there it is. And again, that's, uh, that's a sideways view here. We turn it like this. There you go. And it collapses just as fast as you set it up. So 7-3, guys. Thanks for watching. KJ4YZI.